welcome back to the Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel. We are here. We have to go to track and field because Sarah wanted us to be here at 9 a.m. Turn sure, nice. Seems like I saw some time. No, just head to the field. J -j just go, Reen. Oh, I forgot. Let's see what she said. Oh, structure. I wasn't expecting you to be. Sharon? Sharon? Weren't you in the dormitory when we left? Indeed I was, but I was summoned here by Lady Laura, Lady Laura, Lady Sarah. So after seeing all of you off, I came straight here. How did I guess she'd get it here ahead of us? You know, at this point I shouldn't really be surprised. Sheesh, she ain't the Ramford's top maid for nothing. Personally, I would have preferred not to ask her to come at all. But since she'll be acting as Group A's guide, I didn't have much of a choice. Uh, of course. <laughs> why, thank you. Uh, at least be like, guide? Wait, why would we need a guide? So you're telling me. Oh, it looks like everyone's here already. Oh. Oh, Sharon's here too? Huh? What's she doing here? Cooking, cleaning, instantaneous travel. <laughs> you flatter me, Master Yusus. Well, we've got all of you here now. And look at that. 9 a.m. right on time. Huh? What's that sound? Sounds like a rush of air. Not that it's that no, that's not quite it. Sounds to me like an airship. Are you kidding me? Look. What what is What the heck is that? Here they come. Here, who comes? Who is they? It's Sanic. Even speeding up, it still is taking time. For reals. Who are the peeps? I, I... What is this thing even doing here? Wow, it's so cool! A crimson airship? Who does it belong to? An Imperial Army Warship maybe? Nah, not enough giant guns. The Blood and Iron Chancellor? So the shape looks familiar. I don't remember it. It's like the White Wings of Liberal. You think so too, right? You mean like... The Arceal? The Arceal? Now they mentioned it, it, I do see the resemblance. The Arceal? What's about a high speed of a cruiser from the kingdom of Liberal. Indeed, it was on the very airship that Prince Oliver made his triumphant return to Heimdall. N no way! You're not seriously going to land here, right? Or they're not seriously going to land here. Of course they are! It's a 75 orange from Bow to Cern. That might be a bit of a snug fit, but they should be able to touch down. Man, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah, that's what everyone's saying. Wait a minute. How do you know how large it is? Oh. Oh, it did fit. Barely. Who's the captain, though? It's an awesome looking ship, though. This is the best. It's actually very pretty up close. The more I look, the more it seems like the R-Seal, except red. It bears the crest of Arabonia, though. So at the very least, it's an airship from the Empire. Salutations, my beautiful friends! It's only been ten days since last we met, but I couldn't keep myself away. Prince Oliver! Prince Oliver! And Major Vander! I'm glad to see you all again. <laughs> Your slack-jawed amazement says it all. It looks like this will be quite the crowd pleaser during its grand unveiling in Heimdall. Wait, what grand unveiling? Man, I don't even know what's going on anymore. Ain't that the truth. Still, the prince is just here in a supporting capacity today, to say nothing of myself. The real stars of the show are the airship. 
and this fine gentleman we have aboard. Who may you be referring to? It's been quite some time. I see many familiar faces gathered here today, and several I've yet to have the pleasure of meeting. Wait, don't tell me it's the that? I know that voice. It's not the Emperor. Wait, who is it? Ah! Laura's father. I never recognize his voice. Actually, we haven't even met the Emperor yet. The Radiant Blade Master? Father! So that's Laura's dad? Wait, who's the what now? Who's the what now? Oh, sure, they weren't there. And look, Tobol's with him too. <laughs> this isn't quite how I expected our grand reunion to go, that's for sure. What are you doing up there? And what's with the hat? He's the captain of the ship. Allow me to introduce you. This is Captain Victor SRC, who will be assuming command of the ship. <gasps> so that's what this is about. <laughs> I'll fill you in on the details another time. What in the name of Adios is that? <gasps> Patrick, no! He saw it! Run! Oh, are they brought Patrick for a reason? Docking. Well, what a pretty ship! This thing's a real piece of work. Incredible! And I've heard about the specs, but the numbers don't do it justice. It looks even better alive than on paper. Oh, even the principal came. Principal Van Dyke? You too? Um, could someone fill us in on what exactly is going on here? <laughs> Your bafflement is quite understandable. The chairman of the board proposed a change to your travel arrangements for this month's field study. Oh, so we're taking airship dope! He's agreed to deliver all of you to your respective destinations aboard this airship. What? Sounds awesome. We'll be riding in style. <laughs> He's mainly taking it on its maiden voyage to unveil the ship to the nation. We're just kind of along for the ride. You'll be headed to the capital first, but from there, it'll be a straight shot to Ruhr. Wow. I'm not sure what to say. Huh. This is all so sudden. I think I need to sit down. Well, should we be off, Your Highness? Yes, that sounds marvelous. With that, let me be the first to welcome you, Class 7. Aboard the second Arsail Class high speed cruiser, the Courageous. Interesting name choice, the Courageous. Eh. The Scarlet Dart sounds better. Scarlet something, I don't know. Something red. The Ruby Rover. Oh. The Red Demon. Oh, I can't, I don't know. Oh, well, there we go. Get that high speed going. Dang. Even without speeding up, it's already gone. Ah, the governor. I saw that smile. It's the governor's awesome. That's this frick boy. Host district. Not him again. He's still in the capital. The scrub. Gosh darn it. Not even our high-speed trains could hope to match that. That may be true, but we still have our own strengths. How's the investigation coming along? Well, they've been pretty blatant about trying to obstruct us. It's basically what, about what we expected. The same is true in other areas as well. Understood. Respond with pattern 13. I'll head there myself this afternoon. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Oh, 
Oh, there's a loose in... Is it Sylvia? My, what a spectacular nope. sight! My brother told me all about it, but there's no substitute for seeing it soar through the skies. Simply beautiful! Yes, it really is. <laughs> You're up there, aren't you, Rain? Yup. Ya boy. Well, can tell us where we need to land. Is that the Emperor? Wow! That's the courageous! Oliver finally finished his airship! <laughs> it's a fine ship, isn't it? So that's what the Emperor looks like. Prince Oliver seems to have gone to quite a lot of trouble having it built. Is this the wind of change you intend to release across our state in troubled land? Go, my son, and show me the caliber of man you can be. Well, at least I gotta see what the Emperor looks like. I was expecting him to be a lot older. Honestly, I think Osborne is older than the Emperor is. <clears throat> can you believe it's been almost two years already? Look at how far our debaucherous prince has managed to come. Partnering with Liberal to make a second Arcel class airship, then cruising over the capital? I suppose that's one way to stick it to you for outmaneuvering him at the trade conference. <laughs> Let him have his fun for now. Still, this was certainly an unexpected play at this point. He and that band of students he likes to ship across the country have proven a never-ending source of entertainment. But now, my dear Prince Solomon, we have reached a decisive point. The board has been prepared, every piece in its place. Can you turn the tides in your favor? I look forward to finding out. I can't tell if he's a good guy or a bad guy, to like him or not like him, because part of him wants to be is, like, on the Imperial Liberation Front side. I don't know. Oh. R seriously? You just do a loop around the capital and go to Ruhr? Ruhr? Wow, I just want to show off your fancy ship. I try to keep it on the down, though. North Pro uh, Nortia Province, Southern Edge, over the Schwarzdadrach Barrier, something like that. I don't know. Bridge. It's currently 10.02, and we have a north-northwesterly wind blowing in at a speed of 11 arch. We've just passed through the Schwartz Drake Barrier's airspace into the province of Nortia. Current speed is 3,050 SPH. We've reached full cruising velocity. Maintain current course and speed. Follow the Nortia main line, maintaining a distance of 200 arch. Aye, aye, Captain. So this is what the bridge of our cruiser looks like. It's all kind of making my head spin. If I'm not mistaken, this ship is equipped with the f Foundation's latest information processing system. Huh, so you actually managed to get the Reinford Group, Zeiss Central Factory, and the f Foundation to collaborate? Yeah, I suppose you would be the most well-informed on matters of technology. It took the combined effort of countless supporters to take this airship from the blueprint to beauty. I've caused a great many people no small amount of trouble gathering the technology and funds to build it. Huh, it's nice to know even princes have trouble with finances sometimes. Or financing. Alas, it's true. I had to borrow quite a sum from a number of sources. The Emperor himself, himself among them. But all my labors bore fruit, and we were able to build an airship that met all of my ideal specifications. At a length of 75 arch. It's almost twice the size of the original R cell. With it supporting 20 of Z. With it, it, and with it sporting 20 of ZCF's high performance engines, it can achieve a top speed of roughly 3000 SPH. Not quite as fast as the R cell's 3600 SPH, but the greatest boost high armor and interception capabilities. Good grief, she's memorized all the specs already. 
So the more I hear about it, the more un unbelievable it sounds. It sounds like he's compensating for something. I heard something like this was in development. I never thought I would have never would have imagined you'd pack this much power into it. Well, now that we have a rough idea of how extravagant the ship is. But what I don't understand is why my father's sitting in the captain's seat. He's not even part of the military. Unless father, did you actually enlist in the Imperial Army? Huh, I could understand why you might be perplexed. However, the ship isn't part of any military force. So wait, is it officially regarded as the property of the Imperial family? Precisely. I intend the ship to give wings to a third faction of sorts, connect unconnected to both Imperial and Provincial armies. To the end, I could think of no finer captain than Viscount Arcee. Well, that is at least explained some of it. I see what you're getting at, yeah. The fastest airship in the Empire, captained by the Radiant Blademaster. Huh, couldn't ask for a stronger deterrent than that. I'll say. Well, that's my hope, anyway. About half of the crew here are on loan for my division, the 7th Armored. The rest are civilians, representing a variety of nationalities and social classes. As for me, I'm here because I'm just that good at gathering information. It also tasked me as the point man for keeping in touch with the guild and all its local branches. Makes sense to me. Tovall's definitely a good choice. He's got tact and patience to spare. Me, on the other hand, I'm more the face-punching type. Yeah, that sounds like Sarah. Frankly, I'm so shocked we're here. Never imagined we'd be flying in such a marvel of a ship with such a distinguished crew. You've got me curious, though. Are you intending to tour the whole empire like this? That's our plan, yes. The hope is that might help us assuage some of the tension that's been building across the nation. And if we happen to intimidate the Imperial Liberation Front while we're at it, all the better. Ah, that makes sense considering they've got their own airship too. The Intelligence Division and the RMP seem to be keeping them in, uh, in check for now. But having a ship like this in the air will definitely put even more pressure on the Liberation Front. In other words, this ship allows me to kill three birds with one stone. Genius, isn't it? If I ever feel the urge to stretch my wings, I can take to the skies whenever the mood strikes me. Perhaps one day I'll even be able to put on recital soaring in the skies above Heimdall. Well, putting aside certain idiotic flights of fancy, at this speed it should take less than an hour to reach Ru Ruhr. Feel free to make yourselves at home while you're aboard. Aside from restricted areas like the engine room, you have, to, you have the run of the ship. Go on, poke around a bit. Thank you very much, sir. Um, thanks. I think I'll take you up on that. Now that's how we ended up flying to our destinations above aboard the Empire's newest, most cutting-edge cruiser. But we didn't just sit and look out the windows, of course, since we had cap the captain's permission. We each set about exploring the courageous, seeing what this top-of-the-line airship had to offer. Oh, well, watch this right here. Everything in the ship airship is really cutting-edge. Prince Oliver does the love his surprises. Prince has returned to Heimdall on the air our cell, and now this. We're we'll going to the hole just to see what's down here. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I had no idea the Reimer Company was involved in developing something on this scale all this time. Then I find out it was a collaboration with the Epstein Foundation and ZCF. And on top of that, she's got her hands in the development of our Arcus units too. It's way too much work for one person. How many projects does Mother have under her wing right now? Well, I'm afraid I can't give a simple answer to that. Suffice to say, the chairman only knows about a small number of the projects in development by the Reimer Group. That you, the directors have. I knew it. Oh? Hello, Messerine. Um... Sorry, am I interrupting something? No, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Have you finished exploring the airship? I expect it'll be a while longer before we reach Ruhr. 
finished? I don't even think I've seen half of it yet. It's just kind of overwhelming. Looking forward to landing in Ruhr, though. It's been a while since I've seen the industrial, seen the industrial metropolis. It's not too far from my hometown, so I'd always hear about it in, in passing. Oh, that's right. You're from Ymir, so I guess you would then. You want a little refresher? I can bring you up to speed on all things Ruhr. Sure, why not? Ruhr used to be a factory town, but it grew into a hot spot for technology as a result of its steel and heavy... And... Heavy industry? Oh, yeah. Steel and heavy industry. Population is around 200,000 since the cities in the Norsha province. It's under Marquis Rongner's jurisdiction. Ah, oh, that's right. I still find it kind of wild that Angelica is his daughter. You know, last time I visited it, it felt like the whole city was man-made. Trees and grass were rare sights. Made it kind of hard to tell how large the city really is. <laughs> well, the city itself is basically one giant structure divided into several levels. It's been expanded so many times that even long-time residents occasionally wind up in places they don't recognize. Why? I've lost count of the number of times I've had to go pick up Lady Lisa when she's lost her way. <laughs> that was when I was a kid. Don't say it like it still happens. But really, it was a long time ago. No, it happens all the time. <sighs> Something tells me we're looking at the not-quite-so-distant past. <laughs> anyway, north of where is the... Sashashin Sash, 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 Iron Mine. The Iron Mine there makes its way into the most of the Rhineford Group's products in some form or order. The amount of ore they get from just from that one mine is immense. The Empire would be a different place today without it. I don't doubt it. Even our textbooks mention the Sash, the Saka Mine, the Saxon Mine. It's been vital to the Empire since back before the Orbital Revolution. Center for Earth, you can't miss the Rhineford Group's corporate headquarters, which is also basically my house. Honestly, I was hoping I wouldn't have to go back anytime soon. At least so. <sighs> I guess there's no point in moping about it now. We get to have a field study that didn't spiral into some sort of hectic adventure, but I'm ready if you are. We'll just take it as it comes. <laughs> I'll be wishing you all the best. Okay. Well, here's three of the bros. All right, we'll talk to Crow. Come on, nobody wants to see dudes sing. It's all about the ladies. Besides, if we make the outfit skimpy enough, guys will be breaking down the doors to get in. Oh gosh. Are you three working out what to do for our concert? Yep, we've got the general gist of it figured out now. But let me ask you, Reen, would you prefer male or female vocals? That's a really important question too, since it'll change the audience we draw. I say female vocals. Hmm, that's a tough decision. Why don't we try them both then? You know what? That'd be perfect. I really like that idea. Two songs would be the perfect length, too. Rehearsing will be a bit tougher, but I think we should do it. Let's use both plans, too. You won't see me complaining. He seems really excited for this. Let's see, can we talk to you? <laughs> Your ideas have all the subtlety of a sledgehammer. You realize that this will put us in direct competition with Class 1, correct? We need to do something with a degree of class in order to take them on. Oh, we'll be fine. On no joke, I guarantee Celine is on the ship somewhere. Celine's gotta be here. We haven't even seen Sarah yet. Shop? What do they have here? Healthy liquor? <laughs> Can I actually buy liquor and drink? That'd be hilarious. Actually, does it give me anything? I don't even realize if it give me anything. No, it doesn't. over here. Gotcha. 
Oh, this ship is amazing. We're flying faster than a bird. Take that bird. Now that I can, now I kind of want one. I wonder if Gramps will get me on, get my own airship. I ask him real nice. You could already fly around on Aragetlam. You don't go, don't go getting greedy. View from up here is so beautiful. I feel like I'm weightless, soaring peacefully above the clouds. You now this is actually the first time I've ever been on board an airship. Well, I think I'm starting to feel a little dizzy. Is that normal? The airship we used in the core was pretty fast, but this one's even faster. In fact, its specs seem pretty high across the board. Fancy stuff. Never a dull moment in Class 7, I guess. Yep, alright, let's talk to these boys. Long last, the Courageous has finally taken to the skies of Erebonia. Huh, <laughs> feel like a, a mother hen watching her chicks leave the nest. I'll take your word for it. This may sound a bit forward me to say, but... Sounds like you had some hurdles getting this project together. Huh. It was no easy ride, I'll say that. I doubt it it would have come together without the prince's unwavering dedication and tireless work. He had to find the time to raise funds and oversee the entire project, in addition to his all of his official duties. And to add to that, he had to take care of all the arrangements necessary to get Vicon RC installed as its captain. Can't even imagine how busy your schedule must have been. Even from a student's perspective, it sounds brutal. Well, for this ship to have any weight as a deterrent, I needed the Viscount. Thankfully, he agreed to my request. Our plan is to create a neutral third power capable of acting independently of our nation's two competing factions. You can think of the Courageous as the f first physical embodiment of that ideal. A third party, huh? I feel like I'm starting to understand at least part of what it is you're trying to accomplish. The road will be a difficult one, though. True. But this is only the beginning. Seeing the ship soar through the clouds for the first time moves my heart. Just as when Class 7 was formally established. I look forward to seeing what the future holds for the courageous and for the brave men and women of your class. Hold, oh, that's, that's all hold. Your Highness, we live in, in, in interesting times. The political situation across the Empire seems to grow more ominous by the day. But with any luck, make a real sh making a real show out of the ship's launch will push back against the prevailing climate. Well, that's the hope at least. Either way, you'll have your whole life to split hairs about politics. For now, give your attention to your field study. Thank you. I know you have high, expect high expectations for us, and I hope we'll be able to meet them. Okay. Oh, that's the boring guy, that's not what I want. Inspector Sarah, Toval, what are you guys doing out here? I have just a little bracer to brace for info information swapping. Huh, <laughs> that's about the long and short of it. Been a while since I last saw you guys, though. Not since last month in the gr in the grant and the gram. Yeah, always nice to see a friendly face, though. Well, despite keeping in touch with him and setting up these arrangements, it came as a surprise to me to see him on board too. Clearly, it was meant to be. Honestly, I was only brought on because of my connection with Vicon Arseed. This airship really is. And a class all its own, though. It's not even every day you see a ship owned by the Imperial family and captained by the Radiant Blade Master. This cruiser has the potential to be an important force in Arabonia going f going forward. Without ties to the Imperial or Provincial armies, it could potentially keep both of them in check if need be. Might not be able to do that quite as well as the strong as the strong Guild presence could, but it still help protect a lot of people. That's true. Ah, so frustrating me how the guild used to be an institution here. Now we're barely keeping the lights on. At least the crossbow branch scenes sends its people over to help us out. When we need a hand, though. Wenzel's one thing, but we owe McLean so many favors I've lost count. McLean, wait, are you talking about... Oh yeah, I was guessing you would have heard of him. He's an A-rank bracer over in the crossbow branch. Guy we used to work with named Wenzel. Works, works there now, too. Or maybe we should back it up a bit. They yeah, are talking about is Arios McLean, aka the Divine Blade of Wind. Lane probably sounds familiar to you because he's also pr practitioner of the Eight Leaves One Blade School, so One Blade style. Yeah, that's who I was thinking of. I've never met him myself, but I heard a lot of about him from my master. He mastered the school's second form and sounds about as untouchable as anyone. 
who holds the title of Divine Blade. Well, he's pretty dang strong, I'll give you that. Bailed me out more than a more tough boss than I, I'd like to admit. Speaking of, you know who else is a student of the this school? Cassius Bright. We were talking about him before, remember? He's the bracer who took command during the big incident two years ago. Though, from what I heard, he left the way of the sword behind a while back. Cassius Bright was here in Erebonia? Wait, two years ago. It was a eventful time, to put it to put it lightly. And yeah, we have Cassius to thank for getting us past that. But afterward, well, you know the story from there. They, sh they shuttered guild branches all across the Empire, one after another. And your dear instructor was out of a job. I'd be glad to give you all the grisly details, but it's a long story. We should probably save it for another time. But hey, the guild seems to have a good track record with folks from the Thief School. Maybe you should consider a care... A career as a bracer. Door is always open, you know. Me, a bracer? Huh. Never we really thought about that. About thought about it before. Hey, there's enough of a. Hey, there's enough of us singing the bracer blues without you trying to recruit my students. Never hurts to start them early. Seriously though, we're always looking for more for more good people. If that's something you want to do. I wouldn't turn you down. <laughs> I'll give it some thought. Is that it? Can I go back into the bridge? I mean, that was it. Ah, but, oh, we have this as well. Honestly, you could have told me about this a little sooner. Is this the reason you've been so busy lately? <laughs> I apologize for the secrecy, but much of this project fell under the veil of strict confidentiality. There are some things I'm forbidden to speak of, even to my daughter. I'm sure you realize that. But Klaus must have known, right? Why was he al why was he allowed to know while I was left in the dark? Well, really honored to have been invited aboard. We can rest a bit easier once we arrive in Ruhr, Ruhr knowing we had an Imperial escort. Indeed you can. The provincial army will have a little little choice but to accommodate you. The ship's purpose is to act as a deterrent to both factions as well as the Imperial Liberation Front. By doing that, we hope that the Courageous will hold the old guard at bay long enough for something new to take root. I'm sure it will. They choose wisely in naming you captain, or chose wisely. Still, I assume that's not this ship's only purpose. Well, true, building an airship this advanced seems excessive if you're all you're going to do is use it as a deterrent. I was right, there has to be some other purpose it was made to fulfill. How <laughs> very perceptive of you. I regret that I wasn't able to discuss this with you properly when you were in the Grand Bus Month. But I'm proud to, s to see just how much you've grown since you just enrolled at the Acad since you enrolled at the Academy. I have my class to thank for that. Learning alongside them has been a constant source of insights. So tell me, Rain. How's she doing? Is Laura getting along with the other students? Huh? I think she's been fitting in fine. I see. That's reassuring to hear. At times I worry that growing up in a sword fighting household caused her to end up less well rounded than her peers. I hope you and the others will continue looking out for her. Of course. I'm glad she's with us. I can't imagine class seven without her. <laughs> can't help but gain the feeling that she's something more to you than simply a classmate. Whatever the truth may be, I hope you'll continue treating her as the lady she is. I'm not one to abide inappropriate to abide in inappropriate behavior toward my daughter. I don't have the faintest idea of what you're talking about. But I'd like to think I know how to conduct myself toward my classmates. Good, good, that's what I wanted to hear. And she heard the whole thing, probably? How could she not? What are the two of you going on with all your whispering and your furtive glances? <coughs> it's nothing you need to concern yourself with, just a little discussion between men. You needn't worry. We'll be sure to get you to your field studies safely. The student of Thor's, I expect you to give it your utmost. Huh? Huh, <laughs> he really does care about her. I think that's it though, right? I mean, where else do I have to go? Have I done everybody? Back to the hold again.
Attention all crew members oh, there we go. and passengers. We will soon be entering Ruhr airspace. Please prepare for landing and make sure you have all personal effects with you before disembarking. Sounds like we're almost there. That was a shorter flight than I'd expected. Guess I'd better go round up the others and start getting ready. That was pretty quick. Ruhr Airport's granted us permission to land. Commence landing preparations. And keep the engine warm. We'll be taking off again right after our guests have disembarked. Aye, aye, Captain. Preparing the courageous to land. Including today, you've got three days for this month's field study. Make them count, guys. I plan on it. We'll do the best we can. You guys be careful in orders, okay? Yeah, it sounds like things get dangerous there. Huh, don't sweat it. We'll be fine. You ought to be alright if a certain someone can keep her mouth shut. Take care and roar, everyone. Will do. When we get back, we'll be jumping straight into festival prep. Hope you're ready to discover the true terror of planning by, planning by committee. Oh, that's right. With everything that's happened so far today, I almost forgot about that. One we'll of the songs and outfits finalized by the time we get back. We should have the positions all figured out, too. It's just to save at least a bit of strength. It'd be a shame to come back too tired to outdo class one. Well, I think I could find the energy. <laughs> that's all the more reason. For us, return safe and sound. Huh. The spirited joys of youth. Sir, both your field studies and the Academy Festival will prove valuable experiences for all of you. Work hard out there, guys. But not too hard, you hear? May the goddess be with you. Take care. We will. The creatures touched down at the massive rural airport, where we parted ways with the members of Group B. Almost like Class B. With us safely on the ground, it was wasted no time taking you to the skies again, ferrying the others west toward Ortis. Rur was amazed in every direction, but Sharon guided us to the Ryanford's corporate headquarters without missing a step. Speedwalk, speedwalk. This tunnel goes on forever. I can't help but recall trying to navigate Gorelia Fortress. <laughs> I guess when you build with tons of iron and concrete, everything starts looking pretty similar. We're not far from the city center now. You might want to brace yourselves. Rur has an even wider layout than the capital. I mean, that's my hometown you're talking about, but I can't deny it's true. Looks like we're finally out. Yeah! It's gonna be huge. Yep, the industrial metropolis. Escalators. It definitely looks very industrial. Whoa, the city extends above and below. Well, we grew up around steel fabrication and heavy industry. And so it came to be known as the Empire's Industrial Metropolis. Oh, it's from a control car. You're right, it is weird. It's got a population of around 200,000 people, too. That's as big as the capital of a smaller country. I feel like the city's gotten even bigger since the last time I was here. Hmm, the Ramford Corporate Headquarters is on the upper level, right? That's right. If you'd like to visit, just head up the escalator. Allow me to welcome you to Ruhr, home of the Reinford Company. I sincerely hope that your field study here will be a fulfilling one. Maybe, Sharon. Wait, is she actually part of our group? Oh, she's not. Dang it. I can do this. My turn. Right. Go. Right. Right. Oh. Right. Also, if you could actually fight with Sharon, it'd be amazing. Wow, a moving staircase? Even the capital doesn't have these. What do you say they're called again? Escalators? Right, the first one was built in Zeese. After that, the technicians were decided... Uh, something. Guess that's what we just want to show off a little, huh? Huh. <laughs> little kids, I swear. Hey, look at that. 
What is that? That's an awfully strange shape for a building. What? That's not even a building, is it? Nice catch, Rain. That's actually an orbital generator. But it's so big. That's what she said. Rura has so many factories and industrial facilities that the city uses an enormous amount of orbital energy. Having large generators that send energy where it's needed is more efficient than use each factory producing its own energy. But that's quite a setup. Technology really, really come a long way in such a short time. Buying for a group, corporate HQ. Whoa, I've seen the building in pictures, but it's even more commanding in person. Guess we wouldn't have expected any less from Reinford's corporate HQ. I couldn't believe my eyes the first time I saw it either. It's a big building, sure. They're not as big as Orcus Tower and Crossbill. That's a 40 plus cracker, but the tallest in the continent now, I think. Well, that's the tower we could see from Grey Fortress, right? Yeah, that's where they were holding the trade conference last month. <laughs> no need to be so modest, Elisa. It's your family's digs. No one's gonna mind if you talk it up a bit. I I'm not trying to. <laughs> well, shall we go inside? Are we gonna. Okay. I got this! Well, I know you got a ring, because you're the, you're, the, you're, the, you're, the, you're the bro. Definitely looks fancy. Wow. It's like a straight up museum. It's like a museum. It's just as fancy on the inside. All these are. Are these all scale models of the machines Reinford makes? Yep, I'll tell you more about them later if you're interested. Lady Elisa? Oh, it was a dude. <laughs> Hello, Dalton. It's good to see you again. Oh, the pleasure's all of mine. It's been six months since you've been home. I'd heard you were attending a military academy on the outskirts of the capital. But it looks like you found you finally decided to come back and visit the old homestead. Yeah, here I am. We're staying the next three days. I see. That's wonderful news. I keep taking good care of her, Sharon. I certainly will. Okay. Oh, it's one thing to hear about it, but... What do you mean? Kind of brings home the fact that she's a Reinford. <sighs> Let's just get going, okay? <laughs> Allow me to show you to the chairman's office. We'll be going up to the 23rd floor. 